The recent trend for Genshin 4-star characters is that they seem to be leaning towards a specific niche to excel at. While units like Yunjin and Goro are good examples of this, a recent contender known as Mika represents an attempt at providing physical damage support that just doesn't work. In this Mika analysis video, and as someone who got cursed with C4 Mika during the Shenhe banner, I'm going to be diving deep into the support capabilities of this 4-star and why it's not better than options that we already have and why he ultimately doesn't work as a physical damage support. Mika being hyped up as the first attack speed slash physical support had a lot of expectations that he will be a good pairing with Eula who is generally considered as the queen of physical damage. If you happen to be one of those crazy people that actually has Eula at the moment, like me, you're probably going to be pretty excited to try him out. So let's go through Mika's kit. Normal attack. Uh, just don't bother with it. Don't even level it. He's a support, and the main attraction of his kit comes from his skill and burst. Unless you're crazy enough to play him on field, I would just use his skill and then switch to another character. Skill ability, so this is where everything comes together. Tapping the skill button fires a piercing arrow that deals cryo damage. Holding it will enter you into aim mode, and while you can't aim for a target's head to guarantee a crit, it will auto-target the nearest enemy. If you hit a target by holding the skill button, the projectile will split off and hit up to three additional nearby targets. Hitting at least one enemy with the skill will grant an attack speed buff for 12 seconds. So as you can see, if I kill Timmy's pigeons, Eula's attack speed does increase noticeably when testing in the overworld. Mika's burst will heal nearby allies on cast and create a circle on the ground. Whenever the active character lands an attack, they will be healed, with an interval of 2.5 seconds of how often it can trigger. The circle itself will last 15 seconds, but just keep in mind that the healing on cast is team-wide, but the heal you get from attacking only heals the active character. However, via Mika's two passive talents, you also gain a physical damage bonus depending on the circumstances. If you hit any enemy in addition to the initial target, while you have Mika's attack speed buff, you will gain what is known as a detector stack that deals 10% additional physical damage per target that you hit that is not the initial target. So you will have to hit two or more enemies to gain any stacks at all. You can have a maximum of three stacks, but it is increased to four with the Ascension 4 passive. So if you don't have the A4 passive, hitting a single target with a skill will not give you any physical damage bonus at all. In addition to increasing the maximum of detector stacks to four, if the active character is affected by both Mika's skill and burst, landing a critical hit will grant you an additional stack. It can only trigger once per skill cast, so the Ascension 4 passive makes it possible to get 10% physical damage buff when facing a single enemy. Since Mika will be most likely paired with Eula, I'll try to form this build around supporting Eula instead. Mika will be used as a battery character, meaning you'll most likely cast the skill, then switch to Eula to catch the energy particles in order to charge up her burst again. This means given Mika's burst that costs 70 energy, you probably won't be able to burst every rotation. If there are no other cryo characters on the team, his energy recharge requirement will hover around the 200% mark. Assuming you don't have any constellations or the Favonius Lance, a little bit above 200 ER is the way to go, which leaves the weapon choice quite apparent. Just use Fav. If you don't have a Favonius Lance, you can also craft a prototype Star Glitter, which can serve as an ER stat stick. Using Favonius will not only lower his ER requirement, but also funnel more energies to teammates as well. Yes, you can technically use any other pole arms that give ER, but are you really going to take the catch away from your Shanling? Because I hope not. Let's go through Mika's artifact sets now. Being a straightforward support unit, he's quite easy to build. Just run a 4-piece Noblesse Oblige set if no one else on the team is running it, or 4-piece Exiled if there's already a Noblesse user. Mika's damage is pretty much non-existent, so since his healing stacks with his maximum HP, just run an Energy Recharge Timepiece, HP% percent Goblet, and an HP% percent or Healing Bonus Circlet. So on to the spicy portion of this analysis. If you plan on using Mika as a physical support, he has a plethora of problems that makes them hard to slot into the team, given he already has a lot of competition in the cryo support department. 
My information on this analysis is mainly sourced from Kachain Main, as well as some Reddit investigations, both of which will be linked in the description. And to clarify when I mean problems, I really mean what parts of Mika will be lacking in terms of meta, meaning this only applies in the Spiral Abyss endgame. If you just want to level him for overworld content, go right ahead. Let's talk about his attack speed buff first. Many thought that since he buffs the active character's attack speed, it will lead to a higher DPS. However, in the case of Eula, this is actually hardly the case. First of all, Eula has 5 attacks in the normal attack chain. However, most players will dash cancel or press the skill button when they reach Eula's 4th attack, as the 5th and final attack comes out slower and is generally not used to maximize DPS. Given that a good chunk of Eula's damage comes from her burst, we'll need to consider how good the attack speed buff is in the context of her burst. So when cast, Eula has 7 seconds to deal as many instances of damage as possible. The nuke will deal damage proportional to how many times damage is dealt during that 7 seconds. Eula follows a pretty standard combo that everyone that plays her will know about. If performed, it will deal 14 instances of damage during the burst. The optimal combo for Eula's burst is already so optimized that assuming you can finish off the normal attack chain in the combo, you'll only deal one additional instance of damage. Assuming this reddit pose is correct, if you upgrade Mika's skill to level 8 or beyond, you can potentially get two additional stacks, assuming you follow a tight rotation and you have good ping. All in all, Mika's attack speed buff doesn't actually benefit Eula all that much. The attack speed buff will last 12 seconds, and when accounting for all the setup Eula will have to do for the optimal combo, if you want the speed and physical damage bonus for the entire duration of said combo, you will have to fire Mika's skill right before switching to Eula, meaning your rotation will become stricter, as you have to do any setups with shielders or electro characters before casting Mika's skill. The other reason why Mika doesn't really work with Eula is that his physical buff only applies to the active character, and you'll need multiple enemies present in order to gain a considerable amount of additional physical damage. When accounting for both passive abilities, you can gain a maximum of 40 physical damage boost, and this is assuming you're facing 4 or more enemies at the same time. If there's only one enemy present, which by the way, there will be a lot of cases of that happening in the Abyss, Mika will only give 10% physical damage bonus, which is not very impressive at all. A strategy that some experienced Eula players will do is to switch out Eula during the burst to land her nuke prematurely, as they know how much damage is needed to kill a target, so they can focus on getting energy back and setting up the next rotation. You don't get anything for overkilling an enemy, so this is an advanced tactic that can save you time in the Abyss. However, if you choose to do so when Mika's on the team, then the physical damage buff is transferred to whatever character you switch to, meaning since the burst still counts as Eula's damage, the nuke will not actually get the physical damage buff. So if that's the case, if you don't plan on using Mika's buffs, then why use him in the first place? Now the problems I stated are ones that are exclusive to Eula comps, so other physical teams such as Zhongli, Razor, or even Kaya may not have these problems. However, there's actually one more caveat that everyone should be aware of. Mika's only means of applying Cryo is his skill. His burst ability, other than creating a circle, does not actually deal damage or apply Cryo, meaning if you can't trigger Superconduct with Mika's skill, you will have to use another Cryo unit or wait 15 seconds for the next skill cast. Since Superconduct shreds physical resistance, you definitely want a consistent way of doing that in your physical teams. So, are Mika's problems unsolvable to forever be doomed as a physical support? Well, actually no, as his viability can increase with constellations. So let's take a look. C1 decreases the intervals for Mika's healing during his burst. It adds a little bit more healing, but overall nothing too impressive. C2 gives a detector stack whenever Mika's skill hits something. This one's actually quite nice, as if you're facing a single enemy and you trigger Mika's A4 passive, you can now have two detector stacks, meaning his physical damage buff jumps from 10% to 20%. Effectively, you can now always get 10% physical damage when casting the skill, though the maximum amount of detector stacks is still 4, so 40% physical damage bonus is still the most you're getting. 
but this constellation makes it easier to achieve that. C3 adds 3 levels to the burst, so basically more healing. Why not? C4, whenever Mika's burst heals, Mika gains 3 energy. This can happen a maximum of 5 times per burst, refunding Mika 15 energy. Now we're getting somewhere. C4 essentially lowers Mika's ER requirements by a considerable amount, as his burst will technically cost 55 instead of 70, assuming his healing occurs 5 times every burst. C5 adds 3 levels to the skill. This is actually a 3% increase to his attack speed buff. It's a small boost, but since the skill is Mika's only means of applying the speed buff, it's something at the very least. C6. This is the big one. Just like a lot of Inazuma 4 stars, Mika's C6 is the one that really brings out his full potential. Not only can you gain 5 detector stacks now, the active character will now gain an additional 60% physical crit damage. This is a potential game changer, as you now gain a maximum of 50 physical damage bonus from Mika's skill, and the additional crit damage bonus is also a pretty big jump. The best way to gauge Mika's usefulness is to match him against characters that already function as similar roles. Two characters come up in this case, Diona and Rosaria. While Diona's personal damage is weak like Mika's, she gives a shield upon skill cast and generates energy to funnel to Eula. Diona's burst also creates a circle of cryo on the ground, and not only does it apply cryo periodically, not only that, unlike Mika who is stuck in the physical damage support role, Diona can fit into freeze teams as not just as a cryo battery to support Eula. Rosaria's role is more suited for an offensive playstyle. While she doesn't provide healing or shielding, her ability to apply cryo, as well as giving teammates a rare crit rate bonus, makes her quite effective in physical comps. And much like Diona, Rosaria can fit into a multitude of teams, such as Freeze, Melt, and as a general support, something Mika doesn't have the luxury of. By investing the same amount of resources into Diona or Rosaria, you open yourself to more types of gameplay, not just as a physical support, which by free-to-play standards can be huge in terms of how much variety of gameplay you experience by putting in a similar amount of resource investments. So what can we gather from these findings? Well, without his C6, Mika's lackluster physical buffing potential makes him hardly any better than existing options. From his non-existent damage and cryo application to trigger Superconduct, to healing that only triggers for the active character, to middling physical damage buff when facing a single enemy. It's hard for me to recommend him as a physical damage support unless you have him at C6. And most he will feel like a side grade with heavy investments. Due to these shortcomings, Mika is an example where his 4-star niche fails to find a place in the meta. Overall, he gets a 2 out of 5 from me. But hey, if you want to do some funny overall memes where you give Ayato a seizure, or want to watch your Mia fire arrows like a machine gun, go right ahead. Given that a free-to-play slash low spender likely has to pick and choose which characters to level in the roster, I would say just save your resources and spend them on Diana or Rosaria instead. This has been my overview on Mika, and as a Eula enthusiast, I can't say I'm impressed. I hope that Hoyoverse will actually test future 4 stars in Abyss content and not just in the overworld, as Mika's niche role just isn't enough to propel the physical archetype into top tier. Anyways, I'd like to hear what you plan to do if you got Mika during Last Patch's banner, and whether or not you will actually be building him. Thanks for tuning in, and have fun with the game.